uh, Jean Sweeney. Uh, I've, uh, Jean and I have been friends um, for over 35 years. You want me to come? Yeah, come on up, Jean. <laughs> Please. See, you can hear it. All the good things. You didn't? <laughs> The, uh, one of the great joys is that she is on fire. It's not just simply the IBC. You know that Jean is a reflector. You read everything in there. That she's done the retreats. And she does an extraordinary job. Those of you who, who have been on this, her retreats. Isn't it extraordinary? Yeah. So, but she also has a heart for the poor. And I was thinking, it's not simply the corporal works of mercy, but the spiritual works of mercy. Um, I remember many years ago when she was the head of the Literacy Council in Northern Virginia. <laughs> and she loved, she loved opening the ability to read to people, to adults. I mean, it was her joy and she grew that. And uh, she has a real compassion for people who are trying to sort out their you know, uh, for 20 years she was. We worked together most of that, part of that time at St. Charles Parish. She was the counselor, but it wasn't. You know, people's lives go off uh, the track. Mine has done at times, and you need someone like this, like Jean, who can listen deeply and love deeply, and yet has profound insight. And. Uh, so I certainly benefited. We did so many things together when we were working as a team as, uh, in that parish. But uh, she also has a heart that I have not yet gotten to. So she, she's gonna make me stretch. And that's, she has a deep, uh, deep heart for the prisoners, right? She's, for many, many years, she's gone to Fluvanna uh, State Prison in Virginia and conducted Kairos weekends, not just the weekends, but then the follow-up meetings. And the love that she has for the women who have, have struggled in life and been knocked down is profound. Um, she continues to do it, but she also, as if that wasn't enough, she also uh, volunteers uh, weekly in the Arlington Jail. Um, so in, in all of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, this is a woman who has inspired me all the years I've known her. And it's an honor for me to be on the same stage with you, Jean. And it's always an honor to, to, uh, to do anything with you. God bless you. <laughs>
joining the IBC when Jim followed me, Jim Kelly, and then that I worked with Patty. Um, these things. So what is the job of the reflectors? All of you raised your hands already. It's really to find God in all things, along with that other person. So those of you who don't know what happens, if you work in IBC, you're, you're doing two days a week with the poor. And you get assigned a reflector. And in that reflector session, like if you haven't been doing this, this is what you should be doing. You help, <laughs> you help each other find God in all things. You know? And that means in sickness, it's like the principle and foundations of the Ignatian spirituality. In sickness or in health, in failure or success, in uh, sorrow or in joy. So, you know, it's a fabulous thing. The second one, being a person for others, a man for others, a woman for others. Everybody in here who's an IBC volunteer, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. These are the men and women for um, and as a reflector, and all of you reflectors know this too, that it's such a privilege to be in that reflection uh, session with someone because you hear where God is. And um, I'm going to use Mary, Beth, Kami over here. I remember once she talked to me. I mean, it's the kind of thing that lasts forever and has lasted forever for me. She said she was at her homeless site. It's a day place for the homeless. And one of the homeless women who was there regularly had lost her very dear friend, a man. And Mary Beth was talking with compassion. I, I asked if I could share this. And she said, you know, how is this for you? Feeling like this woman would be devastated. And this woman said to her, it's okay. I had my fill of him. <laughs> well, honestly, isn't that what we want? So let us have our fill of each other, you know? That has lasted with me. So being a reflector is like having spiritual direction with somebody. It's fabulous. And the last one is a contemplative in action. Uh, so those charisms of the Ignatian spirituality, find God in all things, be a person for others, and be a contemplative in action. And for me, this is what Jesus was, that he actually stayed in union with God, and look what happened out of it, you know? So we learn that that, that is our task. Even though some of you read the Catholic Herald and it said uh, <laughs> a contemplative inaction, because he didn't know the Catholicism. <laughs> and he had said to me, what, are you, what is this time of life for you? And I said, oh, that's so funny. I just signed up for, what's it called, Katie? LinkedIn. Oh. I have all these young friends. LinkedIn, and it says, what's your profession? And I thought, that's my profession. And I put contemplative in action. But when he heard it, it said contemplative in action. So, <laughs> that was the headline of what was going on in the story that talked about IBC. Anyway, think of how good that is, though, because what that means is that at this stage of life, in a way, we do less and God does more. Jeannie, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Uh, now time to present our second award, our second Del Estrada Award tonight. And presenting that award is a past recipient of this award himself, Mike Curtin Sr. He's also a past national board member of IVC. He's the spouse of Kathleen Curtin, who's the current mentor spiritual reflector for my region, the DC Metro Maryland region and also the father of Mike Curtin Jr., who's the CEO of our partner agency, DC Central Kitchen, 
and it is Fresh Start from DC Central Kitchen that provided all of our food for us tonight. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I was honored when asked to uh, present this award to uh, uh, John, the very Reverend Monsignor John Ensler. Uh, I've known Father John forever. Mm. Uh, his reputation in the community is legendary. But I think it's really significant that tonight we honor him with the Dallas Brothers Award. Because it, the, the award is meant to honor lives that reflect the Ignatian values of direct service to the materially poor and or working and educating for a more just society. Now, Father John is really part of a big, famous family or semi-famous family, the end of the family, of Bethesda, Maryland. Father John was one of 13 children of the saintly Kathleen and Clarence Ensler. To raise 13 children <laughs> should qualify anybody for saintly. <laughs> Father John was, in fact, molded and mentored by Kathleen and Clarence. This couple... It has been clearly established through the chronicles of the stories of Montgomery County and the York Archives of Washington, actually lived their faith. Their deep and abiding faith and wisdom. Faith to recognize and appreciate God's presence and the wisdom to understand that God is found in all things. That was the essence of the Enzo family. It was also the source and foundation of Father John's commitment to serve. The material sent out in announcing the award and uh, inviting everybody to this event this evening uh, chronicles much of Father John's uh, priestly journey. Let me just remind you all of some of the, that journey that was noted in the announcement, as well as some that was not noted. We all know now that Father John is the leader of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. Father John is the CEO and hands-on executive of an organization that has a 60 plus million dollar annual budget devoted to providing direct, hands-on service to hundreds of thousands of people in the Washington, D.C. region. It is in that position that he cajoles, he admonishes, he urges people to be involved to carry out the corporal works of mercy. Superimposed in that role as CEO of this great organization that does such great service to the people of this community. Father John, first of all, shows great respect and compassion for all of those clients of Catholic Charities. He also, by example, shows and, yes, demands that all of the employees and all of the hundreds of thousands of volunteers through the years of Catholic Charities likewise show compassion and respect for the clients of Catholic Charities. A friend of his described him as, finally, Father John, you have become the pastor for the poor. And he most certainly has. That's a very nation thing. Father John is also very instrumental in forming, with lay colleagues, an organization that was originally devoted to provide respite care for others in the community that were, had family members with de de developmental disabilities. The Potomac Community Resources has grown from a respite care <coughs> service of a few people to a service now that touches hundreds of lives on a daily basis with 
permanent help for those people with de de developmental disabilities. Again, very Ignatian in every way. Now for what's not been noted too much, but really is a key reason why we give the award to Father John tonight. As I mentioned, he was originally molded and mentored by Kathleen and Clarence. So Father John has for years carried that molding and mentoring. And since he became a priest in the early 70s here in the Archdiocese, he in fact has mentored and molded hundreds of his fellow priests and lay, lay men and lay women to find God in all things. Quietly, unobtrusively, without publicity, he has been, in fact, enriching the lives of so many of his fellow priests and so many lay men and lay women who he considers his friends and in a quiet, friendly way, steers them in the right direction. That is to say, he steers them and directs them to serve the materially poor, to work, and to educate for a more just society. All of this is done, and has been done, much in the way, the Ignatian ways. Uh, as St. Ignatius molded and mentored his original companions, St. Francis Xavier, Peter Faber, and others. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to present to you the pastor to the poor to receive the IBC $20,000, 2019, 13. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the problem for the John. He always cuts to the quick. One of the awardees for the 2013 Dallas Award, the very Reverend Monsignor John Enzo. <laughs> to say to Mike that um, if anyone has a casket, I'm bring it in right here, put it right here, I'll hop in it, my eulogy's been done. <laughs> well done, Mike, well done. The whole story is there, thank you very much, it's great. It, it's great to be here. I want to thank Mike Hoggins, I want to thank uh, Patty Holly, I want to thank Mary McKinley, and all of you for this great honor. It's really an honor to be here. The good news is, because you're all standing, I'll be brief. The other good news is that I'm at 8 o'clock tonight in St. Bart, so you're going to be brief. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry, you're in good shape, but three, four minutes. A couple thoughts, a couple thoughts. I said yes to this because I believe in volunteerism. I know Jim Conroy, I know Joy Costello who started this program. I know that they saw in the spirit to say, we've got all these young gender volunteers. What happened we had people who were 50 and up who said, I'd like to help and support people in a second career, a career of volunteering and service. It's a great model. It's a model we got to sell, promote, and suggest to other people, because there's a lot of people out there in this generation, my age, and the people below, a little above, who are looking, I think, for what to do with their retirement years. And two days a week service, a reflection to help them continue to think about what they're doing, I mean, what could be better than that? So it's truly special, I think, to honor this group, not us, this group. To be with Jeannie, whose daughter Annie works for me in development, and she does a great work for us in kind of charity. And to think about what we're doing. So just a couple of thoughts. First of all this, I think that we should be very proud of what Charlie and Jim and these, group, these people have done tonight. Because what you're doing is saying, all of us are called to serve. But in the 16th century, as character says, he said this. He said, as constitutive to being a Christian as the gospel and the sacraments is service. Most Catholics wouldn't say that. Yes, most Catholics, what's going to be a Catholic say when I go to church on Sunday? What's going to be a Catholic Well, I try to pray? How many would say, besides like yourselves who get it, it's about service? 
It's about meeting the Lord and other people. So this is a group trying to make that happen. It's a great part of a group of people who say, let's celebrate those who get the fact service is important. We have six volunteers at Catholic Charities, six. I'm thrilled. We have people working in the office, people working in prison ministry with Father Mike, people working in our parish partners, people working in Spanish Catholic Center. It's great. I think Juliet and Barbara are both here tonight, two of our, our, our volunteers here tonight. And it's great to have them here because they come in weekly, two days a week, helps with our work. I told Mike, when Mike came to see me, Mike Goggin, and Mike, I said, I'll take as many more as you give me. I'll find the money. But I had to be careful there because a lot of the groups here are great. I can't steal them all. I'll take what you give me. I'll take what you give me because I can find the money. We want a deal. A couple thousand dollars to get a volunteer two days a week who's got experience, talent, expertise. What's wrong with that picture? It's a beautiful picture. So I want to make this grow. And Catholic Charities, I talked to Mary the other night, the other night and usually I'm the one asking for money and things. That's why Mike said 20,000. He's used to being asked for 20,000. <laughs> I'm used to kind of saying, hey, Mike, come on, Mike, Mike, come on. So he's used to that. But Mary put the pressure on me to say, would you talk about and promote Catholic Charities as one of our partners? And I will. Catholic Charities will be one of your partners. We need a partner to say, who's out there in those parishes? Who's out there in this diocese? Your diocese, Arlington, Washington, says, I got some time. I got some commitment to the Lord. Desire to be a person for others. I don't know. So think about how we can help you do it. We're going to get more volunteers, double next year, going to give them to us. Major one, we'll take as major one, because they do great work. They grow with their own ministry. The church gets better, and guess what? The church becomes active and alive in the lives of many people. For that honor, be part of this night, I'm grateful. Thank you so much.